Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon Titus 1, 2 While reading this chapter we must understand that Titus was sent to Crete to superintend the preaching of the gospel throughout that island. Crete was, at that time, inhabited by a people who were only partially civilized, and sunk in the very worst of vices. Paul, therefore, tells Titus to speak to them about things which would hardly be mentioned to Christians nowadays. Titus 1, 1 1-4. Paul, a servant of God, and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began, but has in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Saviour, to Titus, my own son after the common faith, grace, mercy and peace, from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Saviour. You have probably noticed that Paul's benediction, when he is writing to a minister, is always grace, mercy and peace. Writing to churches, his usual formula is, grace be to you and peace, but God's servants, called to the work of the ministry, need very special mercy, as if the higher the office, the greater the liability to sin and, therefore, in his pastoral epistles, whether he is addressing Titus or Timothy, Paul wishes for his sons in the faith, grace, mercy and peace. Oh, what a mercy it will be for any of us ministers if, at the last, we are clear of the blood of all men. If, having been called to preach the gospel, we shall do it so faithfully as to be acquitted and even rewarded by our Lord and Master, it will be mercy upon mercy. This charge of the beloved pastor has even more force and pathos now that he has gone away to heaven. 5, 6. For this cause left I you in Crete, that you should set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city, as I had appointed you, if any are blameless, the husband of one wife. For there were many converts, there, who had two or three wives. Whatever position they might be permitted to occupy in the church, they could not become officers, they must keep in the rear rank. 6 to 12. Having faithful children not accused of riot or unruly. For a bishop must be blameless, as the steward of God, not self willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own. According to Jerome, this was Epimenides, a prophet poet who lived in Crete in the 6th century before Christ. 12. Said, the Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. They were a degraded people and, therefore, those who would teach them had a most difficult task and needed great grace. Paul exhorts Titus that only specially fit men, men whose example would have influence and whose characters would have weight, should be allowed to be elders in such churches. 13 to 16. This witness is true. Therefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables, and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure all things are pure, 
But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable, and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. This was bad soil, but it had to be ploughed, sown and, with an almighty God at the back of the gospel plower and sower, a fruitful harvest came even in Crete. We need not be afraid of the adaptation of the gospel to the lowest of the low. If there is any quarter of the town where the people are more sunken in vice than anywhere else, there the gospel is to be carried with more prayer and more faith than anywhere else. Depend upon it. God can bless his word anywhere, among Cretans or among any other sort of degraded people. Titus 2, 1. But speak you the things which become sound doctrine. There are certain things which are suitable to go with sound doctrine, they are meet and fit and appropriate thereto. 2. That the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. Among the heathen, old men often gave themselves up to drunkenness and gluttony. So, now, this is the teaching that is to be given to aged Christian men. They need faith, love and patience, as well as the virtues of sobriety, gravity and temperance. The infirmities of old age often create petulance, so the grace of God is to make the venerable Christian to be full of faith, love and patience. 3. The aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior as becomes holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. Old women also among the heathen were often addicted to the taking of much wine, so here they are cautioned against it by the Spirit of God. They are also tempted to spread slanderous reports against people, having little to do in their old age, they are apt to do that little by way of mischief, so they are warned that they are not to be false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. And how beautifully can an aged Christian woman, by her kindly example, be a teacher of good things. There is no more charming sight under heaven, I think, than that of an elderly Christian lady whose words and whose whole life are such as becomes the gospel of Christ. 4, 5. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. There were some women who supposed that the moment they became Christians, they were to run about everywhere. No, says the apostle, let them stay at home. There is no gain to the Christian church when the love the industry and the zeal, which ought to make a happy home, are squandered upon something else. The young women of Crete appear to have been such that they needed to be taught to love their husbands. That expression does not occur elsewhere in scripture. Christian women do not need to be told to love their husbands, but these Cretans, just brought out of the slough of sin, had to be taught even this lesson. Oh, what a blessing is love in the marriage relationship! And what a gracious influence love has upon children! How are they to be brought up aright except the whole house be perfumed with love? 6. Young men, likewise, exhort to be sober minded. That exhortation is as necessary in London as it was in Crete. Young men often know a great deal, or think they do, and they are very apt to be intoxicated with the idea of knowing so much and being able to do so much, so that the exhortation to them is to be sober minded. 7 to 9. In all things showing yourself a pattern of good works, 
in doctrine showing incorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech, that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants, or, as it might and should be rendered, bond slaves. 9, 10. To be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not purloining, not picking and stealing, which very naturally was the common habit of slaves, and who wonders at it in their wretched condition. 10. But showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Saviour in all things. Is not that a wonderful passage? Here is a slave, able to be an ornament to the gospel of Christ. This blessed gospel is not sent only to kings and princes. When Paul preached it, the great mass of the population were in cruel bondage, treated like dogs, or even worse. Yet the gospel even had a message for them, it told them that they might, by a godly character, adorn the doctrine of God, their Saviour. 11-15 for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts we should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Saviour Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak, and exhort, and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise you, 